Let your glory fill the house. Come on, we want his glory to fill here. Let your glory fill the house. Come on, we want his glory to fill this place. We want your glory to fill our hearts. We want your glory to fill our minds. So while we're here at the altar, God, we want you to fill us up. You provide the fire, and I'll provide the sacrifice. If you pour out the spirit, I will open up inside. So fill us up, God. Fill us up, God. We're at the altar with our hands lifted up. With a worship it and praise in our mouth, asking you to fill us up with sacrifice. Let your will be done in our lives, God. Let your will be done in our lives, God. So fill me up till I overflow. Your blessings fall out on me. So fill us up, oh God. Come on, just for about 30 seconds. Come on, open up your mouth and, and give them your request today. Come on, give them your request today. Come on, give them your request today.
Say this is the best day. Everybody clap. Yeah. Somebody scream. This is the best day of my life. These are the best days. He's doing the new thing. Helping rivers to the dry land and water to the wasteland. These are the best days. He's doing his best work right now. Do you trust him and believe him? Come on, here we go.
Watching my perspective I keep my eyes on Jesus I keep my eyes on you I'm changing my perspective I keep my eyes on Jesus Come on. I'm standing on your promise
Praise you the best day. Bless your name. Come on, he's our strength. Come on, lift your hands all over the room. Yep.
gave me grace and extended to me. Cause in the fullness of your grace, in the power of your grace. Come on, say in the fullness of
Said you lift me up. You lift me up. You lift me up. You lift me up. Come on, y'all say. state you lift me up when I feel like I want to give up you lift me up said you lift me up oh God said you lift me up oh God said you lift me up oh God You lift me up. Lift your hands all over the room. In the fullness. Say in the power. You lift me up. Lift your hands all over the room. You lift me up, oh God. You lift me up. You lift me up. You lift me up. You lift me up. Now open up your mouth right here. If we, if you know we serve an incredible God and he deserves an incredible praise. Come on, open up your mouth all over the room. An incredible God, Jesus. An incredible praise.
from the mall. I still can't believe all the ways you made. Come on, this is who he is. He's an incredible.
incredible? No matter if the air conditioning is working or not. Praise the Lord. Esalen said she has a word from the Lord. Praise God. Can you do it louder? Say it louder, Esalen. I'm sorry? Can you speak louder? Sure. Um, as we were singing, you are my strength, and you lift me up, and then we went into an incredible God who deserves incredible praise. God showed me back. It's been a long time since I've been picked up by anybody, but God showed me being a baby. And you know when you get scared, and 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 you lift up for your your daddy to pick you up. And God showed me that as you go through different things in life, He's there. He said, "Just raise your hands. I will lift you up." And you know once you get around, once that baby gets in their daddy's arms. You can do whatever. They're not, they're not worried. Why? Because they're in their daddy's arms. And whatever else is going on around you, you're in your daddy's arms. And he's got you there. And he's holding you. And he, he wants to protect you. But you know what? The problem is sometimes we're like the other times when we were kids. And the daddy's saying, let me pick you up. And we're going, no, 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 I don't want to. And see, the thing with that is, that's why sometimes we're not getting the relief because we're saying, no, no, I can do it. I can do it even though we can. So just lift your arms up and surrender and say, daddy, 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 I need you. I need you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Father, we thank you and we praise you that you are our daddy. And we are not sufficient in ourselves. So, Father, we purpose to approach you as a father, trusting you, letting you have your way in our lives. And we just thank you and we praise you. Father, we thank you that we don't ever have to fear because you care for us and you care for us dearly. So we just bless you, we thank you today. We bless you, we praise you. This is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. So we give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. He's an incredible God. Yes, he is. Praise God. Well, if you want an explanation for what's going on, don't look at me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what's happening. I was told we had new units. We got new units. Um, but the operating system or something is not causing the system to work. So y'all just want to, um, you want to praise or you want me to preach? You sure? <laughs> Maybe you came to lose five pounds today. You came to the right place. Y'all look like y'all Baptists in here. <laughs> with these fans. I don't even know. I try to keep these fans out of here, but they show up anyway. Just kidding. For times like this. Amen. Praise the Lord. There, there's the man. I'm embarrassing. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. If the Lord leads me, well, I'm, probably today isn't a good day to preach on change. <laughs> Y'all might get mad at me, throw your fan at me or something. But I was going to share a message, change or be changed. Change or be changed. Amen? So I'm going, all right, give me a clock. If, if somebody can make the clock say 30 minutes, how about that? Because we, we have some things to do. And then I'll preach 10 minutes longer. <laughs> but anyway, all right, come on, let's, let's get started. Say, this is my Bible. 
I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. Say, it will lift me up out of darkness into the light, out of sickness into health, out of poverty into wealth. Say, today, this day, after hearing and receiving, which making it personal, we, got, we don't just listen, we receive it. After receiving the ever-living, the everlasting word of God, I will never be the same again. Tell somebody, never, 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 never. Tell somebody else, never, ever, ever, ever will I be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. So maybe somebody can keep me posted if things start to change. Like if it starts to feel cooler, just to, just to help me. Do you think so? Yeah. I guess something's happening. But anyway, praise the Lord. So, so change or be changed. Somebody tell the person next to you, say, you're going to have to change or be changed. <laughs> So what I'll be sharing today, and we'll look at some scriptures, is, uh, you know, we've been talking about um, changing in our captivity and how God uh, let the Israelites, let his people go into captivity because they kept, they just kept disobeying him. They kept doing things the way they wanted to do things. They kept doing things the way the world did things. They started to worship idols, right? They started to have relationships with heathens, with people that didn't know God. And so God, he, well, first of all, when God says something, right, it's going to come to pass. You know, in the, when, when the Bible was written, the, the, the um, position of the Hebrew writers was that God did everything. You could blame everything on God, right? But that kind of keeps us from exercising our faith because we can say, well, if God did it or if that happened and God did it, who am I to argue with God? So the way they wrote the Bible is they just blamed everything on God. They blamed everything bad on God. They blamed everything good on God. Not that you could blame people, him for doing good. And so, um, but when God speaks the word, uh, God told, told his people, he said, this is what's going to happen. You're going to get blessed when you obey me. This is what's going to happen. That's what he said. He said, let heaven and earth record this day. Now, you choose life, right? I, I put before you life and death, blessing and cursing. What did he say? Choose what? Choose life. So every day, you and I, life is a series of decisions. Every day, we get to choose life or death. We get to choose what I want to do or what God wants me to do. We get to choose what's written or what's not written. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So when God, so God put that forth, right? So when God says something, when he told the Israelites, he said, um, he, said, he said, if you continue to worship idols, if you keep continuing to not obey me, he said, you're going to spend 70 years in captivity. So it's not like God picked them up and threw them into Assyria. No, he spoke his word. And heaven and earth recorded God's word and their, their, their actions, their decisions, and their circumstances caused them to end up in captivity. Y'all, do you understand what I'm, the point I'm trying to make? So, so we, we obey God's word so that we get blessed or we don't obey God's word and we, and we fall under the characteristics of the curse right, which is everything fails. The blessing, everything succeeds. 
God said, do what I say, and everything that you put your hand to is going to succeed. You're going to be the head, not the tail, right? Above only, not beneath. And you're going to be the lender, not the borrower. Praise the Lord. So, so the Israelites, they ended up in captivity. All right? Let's look at... Um, Let's look at, I'm going to start right off with, uh, I don't think I gave it to them. Psalm um, 55, no, let's look at Daniel 9, 13. Daniel 9, 13 and 1 Kings 8, 47 and 49. Okay? Daniel 9, 13. Praise the Lord. Ho hopefully the machine back there isn't too hot to put up the scriptures. <laughs> It says, just as it is written in the law of Moses, all this disaster has come on us, yet we have not sought the favor of the Lord our God by turning from our sins and giving attention to your truth. Hold, hold that up there. Keep that scripture up there. I want you to notice that, that it says, just as it is written in the law of Moses, all this disaster has come on us right? Because they were disobedient. So what am I saying? We, we go through life. <laughs> Jeremiah 29, 11, 11, we'll come back to this. Jeremiah 29, 11, God says, I know the plans and I thought and thoughts that I have towards you, right? Thought of uh, 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 plans to bless you, to give you a good future, to give you an expected end. As Christians, we have to understand that us being here on this earth was God's idea, not yours. It was God's idea that you be here on this earth, not your mother's and your father's. You're here because God had a plan for you. Not just that God has a plan for us, but God has a plan. He had a plan for mankind. And so we have to stop separating ourselves from the will of God because we are here for him somebody say we are here for God we're here for his purposes we're here on this earth because he has a plan for us right so when we read the Word of God we have to read it as though we are part of God's plan not like we're somebody over there or somebody over here where, it, where the word of God doesn't apply to us. No, the word applies to us because God has plans for us. He always has and he always will. God even has a plan. If you read the scriptures, he even has a plan for people who aren't born yet. So, man, we're here because of God. So, so somebody say, I'm here because of God's plan. Say, I am part of God's plan. So it's when we sit with that mind, we start to get in trouble when we start to act like we're not here as part of God's plan. Like, like we're here for ourselves. You know, like, like being here was our idea. But it's not our idea. Praise the Lord. So the sooner we get... Uh, agree and get involved in God's plan, the sooner we'll see what we want to see. The sooner we'll be what we want to be, have what we want to have, amen, and do what God has prepared for us to do. So when we go back to Daniel 9, 13, it says, I want, I want us to take notice that they said, because of what Moses said, that this disaster has come on us. We've been talking about captivity. We've been talking about that captivity. Let me give you the description again. Captivity, it means the state or period, or let's say the season of being held, imprisoned, enslaved, or confined. Right? So, how many right now, without raising your hand, you feel like in life right now you're confined? Maybe you feel like you're being imprisoned by a situation, right? Or that you're stuck. I think last week I used the term uh, stuck in a rut. 
And so we want, we want to get out of these ruts. We want to keep moving, okay? God wants us, he doesn't want us to go to first grade, second grade. No, he wants us to end up in 12th grade. He wants us to, to be in the first year of college, second year of college, you know what I'm saying, spiritually. So we should be growing no matter what our age is. So that's why no matter what our age is, whether young or old, we are never finished. We're never finished. I mean, we pray to God, God, help us to help me to fulfill and live out the plan that you have for me. And that I fill it to the full, that I accomplish everything that I was born to do. That should be all of our goal, right? So you never get too old. You never retire from being a Christian. You never retire from growing spiritually. Amen? We never retire from doing the will of God. Right? Our last breath on our bed should, should be with the thought of pleasing God and fulfilling his will. Even to go to heaven. <laughs> right? To die believing that you're going to heaven. That will fulfill the will of God. Right? Because he wants us with him throughout all eternity. Uh, Daniel 9.13, um, what the people failed to do was to what they what they did was they they would ask God for favor they wanted God to favor them anybody ever want God to favor you pray for God to favor you ask God to favor you right but what they would do in their what they did in their captivity because they were in the wrong mindset they weren't living for God they were worshiping other things they were worshiping other people right they were committing sins, living in sin, not commit a sin, but they were sinners, right? And so, um, so, but what they would do is like some of us, we're asking for favor, but we haven't repented of anything. So, you know, so then it makes us get frustrated God, please get me out of this. God, please do this. Please, God, please make them do that. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And so we're asking God for favor, but we haven't dealt with us. We're, we're, stuck. we're stuck in a place. We're in captivity because of what we've done and what we continue to do. And that's why repentance is so important. That when we find out that we're living an ungodly lifestyle, we have to re repent. We have to turn from it, not just say I'm sorry, but to turn from it. Stop going in that direction and turn to God and go in the opposite direction. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Does it feel like the air's working yet? Well, I can't tell. Um, <laughs> and so you and I, as we find ourselves stuck in a place, whether it's financial, whether it's socially, whether it's mentally, if we find ourselves stuck in a place, there's something that we're going to have to do before we get God's favor. Let's look at um, 1 Kings. Let's go to 1 Kings. Y'all okay? 1 Kings 8, verses 47 and 49, or 47 through 49, whichever one you have. Somebody say, Change. Say, so I got to change or be changed. And if they have, uh, well, I'll take that. I should have had 46, obviously. And if they have a change of heart in the land where they are held captive, all right? Talking about stuck in a rut. Talking about we're not making progress. Talking about we've been here for weeks, months, years, right? And if they have a change of heart in the land where they are held captive or in the place, in the season. How I many of you know seasons, they're not supposed to last forever. The next season is supposed to come. But if we don't do what's required, if we don't have a change of heart in the land where they are held captive and repent and plead with, with you in the land of their captors and say, we have sinned. We have done wrong. We have acted wickedly. Okay? 
Now, I know I'm, I'm preaching to some goody two-shoes right now, so but just bear with the scriptures. <laughs> verse, verse 48, and if they turn back to you with all their heart, somebody say, if they turn back to you with all their heart and soul in the land of their enemies who took them captive, and pray to you toward the land you gave their ancestors, toward the city you have chosen, and the temple I have built for, you, for your name. <laughs> Verse 49. Then from heaven, somebody say, then from heaven, your dwelling place, hear their prayer and their plea, and uphold their cause. So the main point I want us to see out of these scriptures is God is waiting for a change of heart. Now, in the Bible, heart typically represents your mind, your will, your emotions, your imagination, your intellect, okay? So until we have a change of heart, we're going to stay in a place. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Don't raise your hand. How many of you are stuck in a place? How many of you have been wondering about different areas of your life where why isn't this changing? Okay. Um, let, me, let me share. Uh, I think I've shared this story before where Dr. Lamont and I, before he became Dr. Lamont and I, no, no, we were married. Right? We were married, but um, I think we were married. Anyway, we, um, when we got saved, we uh, dabbled in drugs. Yep, just like you, I wasn't born, born again. So we dabbled in what they call recreational drugs. I'm sure I've shared this with you before. So, you know, the Lord was working on us. I got rid of the wine bottles. Uh, out of the refrigerator and, uh, you know, ditched some things. I eventually stopped smoking cigarettes, praise the Lord. So, um, but we were driving home from somewhere and we had taken some type of drug, some type of pill. And, uh, <laughs> and um, we hit the back of a car at a red light, <laughs> right? So my point is, <laughs> If you don't want to keep hitting the back of a car and getting a car accident, stop taking pills. <laughs> but no, my point is we had to change. So that night, like they say, scared the bejesus out of us, right? So when we got in that accident, we realized even though we were high, <laughs> maybe I'll edit this later, <laughs> even though we were high off of some type of pill that made you slow or whatever, you know, I don't know, whatever. But um, we realized, oh man, we could have been this, we could have been arrested, right? In other words, so in my opinion, God saved us. See, see, God is always, he's still interested. Once we get born again, he is always constantly wanting to save us, right? It doesn't just mean from us the sinful nature, right? Or from, uh, from be, being not born again, but he wants to save us consistently. He wants to save us on a regular basis. Do y'all hear, hear what I'm saying? The Bible says in um, Hebrews 12 that God chastens those he loves so that it could lead them towards life. Somebody say, God's interested in my life. Right? The Bible also says that God wants us to judge ourselves so that we don't get judged with the world. So captivity exists in case we don't judge ourselves. In case we don't correct ourselves, because God forbid, Dr. Lamont and I would kept taking pills and get in a really bad accident and we'd be going to heaven early. I wouldn't be standing here today. Do you understand what I'm saying? So God's always interested 
in saving our lives. And that because he loves us, right? Isn't that a good thing? So he's not trying, you know, some people, uh, they say, well, I don't want to get saved yet because I want to fix this or I'm, I'm not ready because I, I need to do that. No, no. We need to get saved as soon as possible because we're going to keep on messing up and we're going to keep on needing a Savior who's going to get us and prevent us from getting into a mess so that we stay alive. <laughs> Tell the person next to you, say, listen to God and stay alive. Say, change or be changed. Let's look at, um, I, no, I didn't give this to them. Psalm uh, 119, 67. I think I was finished with those things. Um, I'll get back to you if I did, wasn't. Psalm 119, 67. It says, before, somebody say, before I was afflicted, I went astray. Oh, wow. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. Or in other words, because I went astray, I was afflicted. Right? Right? That's plain. Before I went astray, or before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now, somebody say, but now, this is Psalm 1967, but now I obey your word. So what does that prove? That proves that affliction comes when we're disobedient. When we're not living for God. When we wake up every day, when we approach every day like we made that day. Instead of the Lord making that day. And not wanting to do what he wants in that day. Not considering what he wants us to be. What he wants us to do. What he, what he wants us to to do for somebody, how he wants to use us in the whole scheme of things in a day, right? So we can't just be doing our own thing. Tell the person next to you, you can't be doing your own thing. Say, if you do, affliction is going to come. When we go astray, affliction comes. Affliction in the dictionary means to be cast down, to strike, to humble, to trouble, right? How many of you, don't look at me, how many of you keep looking straight ahead, you are, you cast down? How many of you right now, you feel like you've been struck by whatever in life? How many of you are being humbled? You know, we need to learn how to be humbled, Amen? The Bible says don't despise the chastening of the Lord. Don't despise the chastening of the Lord. In other words, when we're being, uh, when we're being challenged, when, when we're being stuck in a season, when we have gone astray and the Lord begins to allow us to be cast down, to be humbled, right? to be troubled, he'll allow it because affliction or trouble, you know, for us hard-headed folks or for people who are hard-headed, trouble and affliction is designed to make you want to change, not to make us backslide. Tell the person next to you, say, do not backslide when the Lord allows you to suffer trouble. Right? He's not mean. He's trying to save our lives. You know, if you, if you get caught, if you get caught in adultery, right? You've been, been an adulterer for months, years, and then it gets exposed. God is trying to save your life before that person shoots you in your head. Before that person runs you over with a car out of jealousy or rage or, y'all hear what I'm saying? 
So God will expose it. He will cause you to be troubled. He'll cause you to be afflicted when you, are, when you go astray to save you, to keep you alive. Amen? Praise the Lord. So, let, let, uh, I didn't give them this either. Psalm 55, 19, I don't think I gave them that. Psalm 55, 19, let me, let me read that out of the Amplified. Psalm 55, 19, I'm going to start at 16. I've got five more minutes. As for me, I will call upon God. Anybody get anything out of this? Or I'll have to preach longer. So if you, if you already get the point, then that'd be good. I can stop. <laughs> Amen. Um, as for me, I will call upon God and the Lord will save me. Evening and morning and at noon will I utter my complaint and moan and sigh. And he will hear my voice. Verse 18. He has redeemed my life in peace from the battle that was against me. So that no one came near me. For they were many who strove with me. Verse 19, amplified, Psalm 55, verse 19. God will hear and humble them. Even he who abides of old, Selah. Pause and calmly think of that. Because in them there has been no change of heart, and they do not fear, revere, and worship God. The King James says, because there is no change. Come on, y'all, say change or be changed. But this verse is saying because or when we don't change, it shows that we what? That we don't fear God. Remember, we're supposed to live this life for God. And because of God and with God. Right? So when we don't change, somebody say, I got to change. There's things in my life, in my personality, in my character, in my, in my actions that need to change. You know, when, I, when, I, um, when my girls got older, I realized that I had to change how I communicate with them. You know, when they would come, never mind, I won't tell my business. <laughs> But they would come to me and uh, tell me of a problem or something, and I would act like, <gasps> and so, ain't nobody telling me nothing when you act like that, right? Your child wants to tell you something, and you go, <gasps> what, whoop, whoop, you're up. <laughs> you know, and then they stop telling me stuff. They decide to tell other people, right? So then I had to learn how to keep a straight face. When they tell me something, right? <laughs> Why did I say that? Anyway, we have to change. So it's crazy. Tell the person next to you, say, it's crazy not to change. Right? Now, we, uh, who in here thinks they should get an award for, for uh, Mr. or Mrs. Perfect? I know some of y'all. You're hiding, you secret perfect people. We probably know who you are already. But we all need to change. You know, I realize, I'm, I'm going to say this as um, last thing. Now, the Israelites, they, they, got, they got thrown into captivity either when they sinned against God or when they were fearful, Right? Remember uh, in, the, in the wilderness, and, I, and I've, I've said in weeks past that God's got open doors for us, and we can't go through that open door the way we are. So the Israelites couldn't go into the promised land the way they were. So God was just going to take a few days, 11 days, to let them see how he takes care of them and that y'all can do this. I have given you the land. There are things that God has given us, has given you, prepared for you, ready for you to walk into, right? Ready for you to uh, actualize, ready for you to experience. But we got to be ready. If we don't change, we can't go in. Somebody say, come on, get ready to go in. Change or be changed. 
I heard somebody say that in life, if you don't change, life will change you. That's, somebody say, that's the hard-headed way. If, if we don't change, life will change us. Somebody say, I don't want to wait for that. Right? Because I fear God, I'm going to choose to change. I'm going to voluntarily change, not necessarily, you know, we're all excited. But when I realize I need to change, it's time to change. Now, I wanted to share with you one example before, before I stop here. You know, you know, as a ministry, we've gone through uh, many things. We've gone through, um, we've gone through a couple church splits, right? And so... You know, after the first one, that was crushing. Then when it looked like a second one was happening, that was crushing. And I'm like, God, God, I, I, surely you're not going to let this happen again, a second time. But, you know, as, as the years go by, now people should do things orderly and respectfully and with honor, right? But I had to realize that... In order for you to fulfill your purpose, some people got to go. Right? That's why we talked about cutting off certain relationships. Because they're going to prevent you from doing the will of God and seeing the will of God. But I realized looking back that I didn't change when Dr. Lamont passed away. I was, this was talking about um, some hard shoes to fill. Like, we were all devastated. This man who was on the phone talking to multiple people multiple times a day, you know, he was kind of a micromanager. He liked doing that. He liked holding control over everybody. <laughs> right? And then now all of a sudden he's gone. And so there's fear in the camp because I, he didn't tell me what to do. He didn't say, Connie, I want you to be the head pastor. I want you to be senior pastor and take over everything. Just pray God, believe God that he's going to anoint you. And, you know, none of that happened. But things happened the way they happened partly because I was in fear. Now, fear is an area of captivity, Right? We're so afraid to do something new. We're so afraid to take charge. You remember when God went to Gideon, Gideon said, look, I'm just a humble uh, peasant, a town guy here. I, I know you're not talk, calling me a, a champion or a warrior, one of them. You know, he was in disbelief. Now, God worked with him. God showed him some things, you know, made the... the, the the wool dried and he made it wet and, you know, so God showed him, I'm calling you, brother. I'm calling you, son, Gideon. You know, but we can't stay in fear forever. You know, I was thinking about how some husbands, you know, your, your household is in a shambles or disarray because you won't take the lead. Now, I can tell you that women don't want to take the lead. But if the man doesn't take the lead, somebody got to keep the household together, right? But fear can cause you to feel like you can't do it, like it did me. I didn't, I didn't feel like I could be pastor. I, didn't, I, I, I'm not, I wasn't Dr. Lamont. Who am I? Matter of fact, women, <laughs> they were um, not men. I'll put it that way. So I didn't have too much going for me, uh, at least culturally. But of course, so it took a while for God to work on me after I lost some things because I wouldn't take the lead. Right? So I've learned that. So change or be changed. Change or suffer affliction. Change or suffer trouble. 
Change or get stuck in a season way too long. Change or lose things. Change or, or stay discouraged. And the last thing we want to do is backslide. <clears throat> you know, I shared before, during those years, sometimes I just wanted to pack my bags and move to Florida. And I'm telling you, my grandkids, they saved my life. I, uh, I stayed here because of them. Not really. Kind of, sort of. But I did in my mind want to pack my bags and move to sunny Florida. Right? But that wasn't what God had called me to do. Amen? Amen? So, so, we, so we have to change. We have to change. And affliction and trouble is supposed to push us towards the will of God, push us towards the plan of God, the future that God has for us. Because we have to change. When we got born again, our spirit changed, but our soul didn't change. Right? So we, we have to change. Amen? Praise the Lord. Father, we just thank you and we praise you. And Father, we know that it's time for change. This is the season of change. There are things that you have planned for us since before the foundation of the world. God, you have plans for us just like you had plans for Esther. And that we are here for such a time as this. We are in the positions that we are in for such a time as this because of your plan. Father, we thank you that you don't do things happenstance. You don't play this as you go along. You've got a plan for each one of us. It's even written in a book. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that we would all purpose to keep moving forward to not resist change, to risk being uncomfortable, to risk being embarrassed just to do your will. So, Father, we just thank you and we praise you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your purpose. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your plan. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. What well, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I'm going to give an invitation for salvation. If you're here and you say, I want the life that God has for me, but we can't do it unless we're changed on the inside. And God wants to change who you are. The Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he is new creation. And so that means when we don't know the Lord, we have to be willing to change, to put ourselves in his hands, to trust him to do what he says he's going to do. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. So if you're, if you're here today and you've never called Jesus the Lord of your life, please just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that I'm a sinner. I ask forgiveness for all my sins. Lord Jesus... Today, I confess you with my own mouth as Lord of my own life. Say, I believe that God raised you from the dead after you died on the cross for my sins. That he raised you from the dead to live forever so that I could live forever with you. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for changing my life. Thank you for coming into my heart. 
Thank you for making me a new creature in Christ Jesus. Thank you for change. Hallelujah. If anybody prayed that prayer for the very first time, if you just raise your hand, anybody prayed that prayer for the very first time? Anyone? Anyone? Just raise your hand. Praise the Lord. Maybe you prayed that prayer to rededicate your life. I didn't ask for uh, rededication. Anybody raise a hand prior to that. But if you, if you pray that prayer because you felt led to rededicate your life, is that anybody today? Anybody? Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. By the way, if there's anybody here and you want to be baptized with the Holy Ghost, if you show me by your raising your hand, we would love to minister to you. Um, our, our ministry will minister to you. Is that anybody? You want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost? With the evidence of speaking in other tongues, God's going to fill you with power. Hallelujah. Power, power, boldness, confidence. Praise the Lord. All right, everybody. Let's give the Lord a, a big hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, why don't you w welcome Minister Sheila? She's going to lead us in tithes and offerings. Praise God. Wow, I'm still processing that word. Pastor, that was amazing. And I know you know it, but sometimes you need to hear it, that when you share those stories of transparency with us, it really helps me. I can only speak for myself. It helps me to understand. It helps me to get it. It was powerful. And I can tell you right now that I don't want to be changed. I'm going to change. <laughs> Praise God. Let's prepare for tithes and offerings. If you need an envelope, just raise your hands and one of our ushers will serve you. And if you're at home and you are also uh, preparing, you have a moment now to prepare your tithes and offering. And shortly we'll show you how you're able to give remotely. And for those of us who are still uh, using the, uh, the check method or whatever, and you're going to use an envelope, at the end of the service, there are two receptacles in the back, and um, you can re will receive your tithe and offerings that way. You can just deposit those. I want to share with you for a brief moment from Luke 6, 38, and I'm using the Passion Version. And I know that this is a scripture that we've heard over and over again, but We'd like to encourage you not to become familiar with the scripture because God speaks something new all the time when we hear the word of God. Um, it says, give generously and generous gifts will be given back to you, shaken down to make room for more. Abundant gifts will pour out upon you with such an overflowing measure that it will run over the top. The measurement of your generosity becomes the measurement of your return. And you might be saying to yourself, where? I don't see the return. But you know, God does everything in seed form. So even your return will often come back in seed form. But you may not recognize it, and that's why you're saying, where? I don't see it. Because God doesn't give us anything typically that's fully developed. Even Jesus came as a baby and he had to grow in wisdom and in stature. So a lot of times our return will come back in the form of ideas. It will come back in the form of concepts. It will come back in the form of wisdom. And we will miss those. But I'm going to ask you today to ask the Lord to help you to see it help you to identify that return, that idea that you've had, that you've been fearful, you've been stuck in captivity, and you wouldn't do because you said, I don't know if it's going to work. Did you try it? That could be your return. The, the move that God told you to make, the person, the connections that God told you to formulate, that could be your return. 
But we have to get out of fear. and We have to say, God, show me what it looks like, and I'll do it. So are you willing to do that today, to ask the Holy Ghost to show you where and show you what that looks like? See, the Word of God says, I have never seen a righteous man forsaken, nor does his seed ever, ever beg for bread. Hallelujah. So if you feel like you're forsaken right now, just stand on the word of God and say, nope, can't be. God has never allowed the righteous to be forsaken. If your seed is struggling right now, my seed will not struggle for bread. God gives seed to the sower, and he gives us bread that we might eat. So if you're lacking anything, just stand on the word of God and believe him wholeheartedly. Video, would you show people how to give, please? Here at Living Faith, we have made giving easy by using electronic options as much as possible. You can text to give by texting LFCCNJ to 77977. You can give once or set up as a recurring gift. Just enter in your details, confirm your gift, and you're done. You can give through our LFCCNJ Church app. This method will look similar to text to give The iOS version of the app can be downloaded at the App Store, or you can get the Android version on Google Play. You can also give online at lfccnj.com giving. If these options are not possible, you can obtain a pink envelope and deposit it as you leave. We thank you again for joining us today. God bless you. Amen. Why don't you stand to your feet as we prepare to do our tithing confession. Okay. Everybody ready? Okay. Amen. Say, we decree that because we are tithers, we receive the promise of scripture that protects those who tithe and give offerings. As a household, we are committed to tithe and give to the Lord's work. Therefore, we claim tither's rights. That means no devourer, destroyer, waster, plunderer, or pillager can rob from us in Jesus' name. They cannot steal our blessing or fruitful harvest. They cannot steal from our home, businesses, or from any of our loved ones. The destroyer can't strip away our heritage or harm our children. We stand in the tither's blessing, which promises that the Lord will rebuke the evil one on our behalf. We stand in the tither's blessing that the Lord will open heaven's treasure and pour out blessings we don't have room enough to receive. We stand confident that the tithe is raising a standard against every demonic plot and attack. We have faith that as Jesus, our Lord and eternal high priest, stands in heaven receiving our tithe, we are under the covenant of his blessing. We prophesy that the promise to the tithe rests upon our families in Jesus' name, according to Malachi 3.11 and Hebrews 7.8. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you that you are standing right now receiving the tithe that we willfully and joyfully, Lord God, return to you as well as the offering that we give, Lord, out of our lack, Lord, sometimes to you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. We thank you for blessing it. We thank you for multiplying it. We thank you for returning it. We thank you that we recognize it when it comes back, Lord, and we use it to give again and again and again and again in Jesus name we pray amen thank you Lord hallelujah you may be seated and now we're going to see a brief video The fallen, the remembered, the honored, fathers and mothers, sons and daughters, sisters and brothers, soldiers, heroes. Today, we remember the profound sacrifices that have been made on our behalf. 
we remember the courageous men and women who have given their lives in service to our nation. Their legacy lives on in the hearts and minds of those they left behind. And their sacrifice will never and can never be forgotten. We honor their memory not only with words of gratitude, but also with a solemn commitment to uphold the values for which they so bravely fought and died. We ask God to grant us peace as we mourn those who gave everything for our freedom. May we always hold their memory dear and never forget the price they paid. So let us honor the fallen today as we remember our fathers and our mothers, our sons and our daughters, our sisters and our brothers. our heroes. God. Oh, my. <laughs> so embarrassing having my tail hanging down. <laughs> I'll turn this way. I'm, I'm hooked up now. Okay. Oh dear. <laughs> Amen. Well, I want to, um, we're going to take this time. I, I, I wanted to honor some very special people today and present people. Oh, I need one of those so I can read it. I'm going to present to uh, some people here, part of our church family. Uh, what we call the Eagles Award, the Eagle Award of Appreciation. <clears throat> and um, according to Isaiah 40, verse 30, it says, But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Amen? So uh, I want to present this. Uh, Eagle Award to people who have gone over and above in their service to the ministry. And of course, we've never been through a COVID-19, and that was an especially challenging time. And before that, but especially since October 2020, when we started coming back into church and as services began to, you know, come back full, full force. Uh, but there are many people here who have gone over and above the call of duty. They've always been here. They've always been uh, on call. They've always um, just given themselves to the service of the ministry and, the, of course, the service of God. And so I'm going to uh, have them come up. And uh, you're going to help me somehow? Okay. So, so you can come up. And then, um, yep. So it looks like we're going to start in alphabetical order. And again, these people, so we, we want to um, just honor them, to honor you, to those who are receiving it, just for um, always being, you know, just working hard and, you know, giving up yourself, your stuff, just to make the plan of God, the work of God continue. Amen? And you are appreciated. Of course, this isn't an a, a exhaustive list of sorts. Many of you have been so faithful, but we want to give this Eagle Award to uh, these people. All right, so we're going to start with uh, Greg Bonaparte. Greg Bonaparte. Is, huh? That's Greg. If he, yeah. he's he's so on call on call he doesn't want to move from his spot. <clears throat> so, Greg's been here 
um, especially during starting with COVID. The next person is Lamar Boone. Lamar Boone. Lamar Boone, he's, he's here. He's been on front line since day one COVID. Praise the Lord. When nobody else was on front line, he was. Yep, yep. The next person is Minister Michael Chavis. Yep. The next person is, well, Brian Clark is not here today. He's been behind the scenes. Gary Cobb. Gary Cobb. Gary Cobb. It's an Eagle War pre uh, presentation. Amen. Charles Jackson. Charles Jackson. Okay, he's okay. Charles isn't here. All right. Andrew Robinson. Andrew Robinson. He's been on call for facilities. Our staff has just been, um, period. Our staff, even when we were closed for business, we were open. Amen. Praise the Lord. James Robinson. James. James. James is here a lot. <laughs> He's here a lot in audio, operating in audio. Praise God. No, go back to the board. No, I'm, I'm just... <laughs> I was really kidding. You can stay up here for a second. <laughs> uh, Jonathan Tyler. Our, our, our MOP and pastoral care has been on skeleton crew. You know, people left during COVID. That's with every area. You know, people left during COVID, and for some people, they just stayed. Amen. Uh, Andrew Walls. Andrew Walls. Even when we had to do praise and worship via video, that was Andrew. Minister Alan Wilkins. <laughs> Minister Alan Wilkins. Minister Kim and Minister Alan, they're like everything back there. <laughs> they dress up Salon 4, they print out certificates, they do funerals, you know. So. One man, one woman team back there. Yvette Brooks. Yvette Brooks. Now, many of you have been, been faithful. Um, many of you have been faithful. Minister Kim Chavis. I thought I said, said her already. Praise God. Gwen Cobb. Gwen, Gwen Cobb. She's pastoral care. So that means uh, Kartik is on here. Amen. They've been hooking me up all this time. Candace Hendricks. Candace Hendricks for the prayer ministry. Yep, her and her team, prayer team. Thank you, Candace. Nanette Jackson, Nanette Jackson. While, Nat, while Nanette is, I oh know, right? Come on, stop being cute, Nanette. Just, <laughs> praise God. There's Nanette. MOP. 
Brenda Robinson, Brenda Robinson. Praise the Lord. I've never been by myself since October 2020, amen. Brenda Robinson, Rosemary Robinson. She's on staff and praise and worship, administrator, decorator, contract uh, uh, negotiator, or whatever we need contracts for. Pauline Robinson Hicks. Pauline. She heads, heads up the ushers. Praise God. She been ushering ever since. <laughs> Sandra Ross. She's on staff as well, Sandra. Sandra. She's not here? Okay, Sandra. Deacon Rhonda Still for the children's ministry. Mickey Tuck, Michelle Mickey Tuck. She's probably in the back sweating in video. But she'll probably get a moment to run out here. She's kind of shy. <laughs> uh, Kartika Tyler. And Minister Vonda Wilkins. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So why don't y'all give all these... Uh, recipients, a great hand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And there's more to come, but not today. So we'll, we'll have Eagles Awards. We haven't done this since uh, Dr. Lamont was here, but we'll, we're going to reinstate this Eagle Award, Appreciation Award. All right. Th thanks, Eagles. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you, thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. Yes. Hallelujah. God is faithful. Praise the Lord. Well, I've got a couple more announcements. Uh, our dance and flag ministry will be holding a pop-up meeting on Saturday, June 1st, which is next Saturday, from 10 a.m. to noon. If you would like to attend or receive further information, please stop by the pub table after service and speak to, uh, with the director, Lisa Smith, so out in the lobby there. Our children's ministry will be holding an in-person parenting on purpose class, POP for short, on Saturday, June 1st, also, from 10 a.m. to noon. The theme will be dis Discipline from Toddlers to Teens. Discipline from Toddlers to Teens. All are welcome. And for more information, please contact Deacon Rhonda Still. Amen. Praise the Lord. Do we have any first-time attenders? We want to acknowledge any first-time attenders today. Any first-time attenders? If you just raise your hand. Any first-time attenders today? Praise God. Yeah, yeah. Can you, like, go like this? Oh, I see. I see your hand. Praise God. Welcome. Come on, Living Faith. Let's welcome him. Say, welcome to Living Faith. Oh, right here, too. Hi. Welcome. We're so glad to have you. We're glad you came today. Praise God. You know where we live. We know, you know what we look like on the inside, so... You can come back and visit us anytime. Amen? Praise God. Let's give them a, another hand. And last but not least, I'd like to give an invitation. If anybody's here and you've been coming to Living Faith and you know this is where God wants you. So if you want to be a member of Living Faith Christian Center, you can just raise your hand. Would you please raise your hand if that's anyone today? Anybody you want to become a member of Living Faith? Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. All right. Also, the altar will be open after we close out in prayer. The ministers and the elders will be happy to pray with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, everybody. You can stand. Um, you can stand. We're going to close out in prayer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're ready to change. Look, it's time. Uh, maybe uh, next week I'll include uh, us believing God for some breakthroughs right here at this altar. Amen? Um, and so, you know, so prepare yourself. If you need a breakthrough in anywhere, any area of your life, be begin to pray and believe God now. Amen? And we'll just take advantage of a corporate anointing here next week. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you and we praise you. Father, we thank you again for your plan and purpose for each one of us. Father, we thank you that you've placed us in this family, this local church, to serve together, to love one another, to be kind to one another. And we just thank you for it. Father, I pray for the vision that's over this ministry. Father, I pray that you would increase it and make it more clear for what you want us to do in the years ahead. We thank you for it. Father, I call all your people under the sound of my voice. We are blessed, happy, fortunate, empowered to prosper, and to be envied. If that's you, just say, I'm blessed. Because God said so. All right, love you. Mwah. Well...